They added perhaps the best receiver in football, but they're still projected to finish fourth. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into NFL's most unlucky team in 2022, the Las Vegas Raiders. And guys, this division, the AFC West, it is crazy. Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Justin Herbert, you've got to face all of those guys twice if you are the Raiders. And then on top of that, your NFC division, your crossover division, is the NFC West. So this is so unfortunate for the Raiders. We're going to go through everything. What is the Raiders' situation looking like right now? What does their schedule looks look like? Is it manageable? How much have they really improved for 2022? Let's get right into it. And let's start, of course, with the most important position in all of sports, We've got Derek Carr back on a new three-year deal. One of the interesting things I didn't realize, he's already 31. So Derek Carr just or recently turned 31 in late March. You can take a look at his overall numbers last year. Very pedestrian, 23 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. He does get Devontae Adams. And guys, if you remember, Darren Waller was injured for a lot of last year. So if Devontae Adams is healthy, Darren Waller is healthy. It should be a lot better year for Derek Carr. I think the general consensus among NFL fans is Derek Carr is uh, more of the average tier quarterback, slightly above average, not really a franchise quarterback. The Raiders didn't want to commit a five or a six year deal. They signed him to a three year extension, but he is a guy that's going to have a high completion percentage and he is serviceable to win games. We saw the Raiders had a breakout season when they were still in Oakland. It was like Carr's third year. They won 12 games. That was in a 16-game season. So we will see. Taking a look at this team's offense, the running backs, I'm not extremely impressed with Josh Jacobs. They did invest a first-round pick into him a few years ago. Zamir White is a really interesting kid uh, that you know a lot of Raiders fans should know. He was drafted late, maybe fourth or fifth round. This is the former number one overall running back out of high school. He goes to Georgia. I think his biggest issue is just the lack of swiftness in his cuts. He's very upright, uh, so maybe he can improve that, but this is a guy that's a boulder. He's a big boy, and we will see what Zamir can do behind Josh Jacobs, the receiving core. You've got Devontae Adams. You've got Hunter Renfro, who really broke out. Keenan Cole being the other starter is a little surprising to me. To me, Keenan Cole and Hunter Renfro are kind of repetitive in what they do. This is just ESPN's depth chart, but personally, I would go Adams on one side and then maybe Demarcus Robinson, the former chief, on the other side with Hunter Renfro in the slot. We know Hunter Renfro is an amazing possession receiver, third and short. It's crazy. Derek Carr loves throwing those short passes to him. Uh, so it's not that Keenan Cole is bad, and we saw Keenan Cole out there, you know, during the Hall of Fame game, but uh, I would move Demarcus Robinson to the number two wide receiver, and then they've got Darren Waller, and hopefully Darren Waller can stay healthy. You're looking at three elite weapons, Devontae Adams, possibly the best receiver in football, Hunter Renfro, and Darren Waller for Derek Carr. Their offensive line, you've got Colton Miller, the kid from UCLA who they invested a first round pick in. He seems to be doing all right. Uh, Alex Leatherwood is struggling. And a guy not on here that I heard was taking snaps away from Alex Leatherwood was actually Thayer Munford at the right tackle position, the former Ohio State Buckeye Thayer Munford, who is a a rookie and who was picked in the fourth round. So I don't know, you know, Leatherwood, a lot of people thought they reached for Leatherwood out of Alabama. He's going into his second season and he is struggling. This should be a relatively good offense. I think when you're talking about the weak points, maybe the interior offensive line along with that right tackle position in specific could be where they struggle. Also the running game, not extremely impressed with Josh Jacobs. I don't love that they use the first round asset on him personally. Looking at their defense and the guy, it, it is going to be Max Crosby. Max Crosby signs the massive extension. He has an amazing pressure rate overall. Maybe maybe doesn't get the elite, elite numbers that Miles Garrett and TJ Watt get, but his pressure rate is awesome. Andrew Billings, there's a name. I remember Andrew Billings. How about Chandler Jones? How much does Chandler Jones have left in the tank? 
if he's, you know, will we see some decrease in his play overall as he gets older? Uh, him and Crosby could be a deadly combination, though, if he continues to play at an elite level. I think the linebacking core for the Raiders could be a significant weak point. We know Denzel Perriman is a veteran. He, I remember when he was on the Chargers, but other than that, not a ton here. And then the same thing with safeties and cornerbacks. So really the secondary might be a bit of an issue for the Raiders. They should have an amazing pass rushing duo. Just looking at this depth chart, the way I see it overall, how about Cleland Farrell? <laughs> remember remember the, during the Gruden years, Mike Mayock, what was he drafted fourth overall? Oh my, he, that was a major reach too. That wasn't even like he, you know, I think he was projected to go late first round or like mid first round and he goes fourth overall. And that's something you never see. Like if a dude's projected to go 17th in the NFL with all the mock drafts they do and he goes fourth and you miss on him, which they did, he looks like a bust. That's a major indictment of your talent evaluation. That is just a horrible pick. He is a backup now to Chandler Jones. But this defense is going to be made on Max Crosby and Chandler Jones getting pressure. That's what it's going to be made on, and we will see. Uh, I'm look, We're looking at maybe a mid-tier defense. It's just going to be tough. This defense is going to have to face Patrick Mahomes twice. They're going to have to face Justin Herbert twice. They're going to have to face Russell Wilson twice. It is brutal. And speaking of brutal, guys, let's get to the schedule. Uh, I'm just going to go game by game, see, you know, is there any easy points on this schedule? Unfortunately, they do have a bye week six. Y you would much rather have it week nine or week 10 or maybe even later in the season is when teams would normally want to have their bye. Uh, so they start at the Chargers. Very tough. They get Arizona at home. It is winnable, but it's, it's another tough game. At Tennessee, I think Tennessee is going to be an average team, but that's an away game, and you're traveling West Coast to East Coast playing a 1 o'clock Eastern game. Not fun. Denver at home, that's tough. At Kansas City, that's tough. You get the bye week. You get Houston at home, free win. At New Orleans, very winnable. At Jacksonville, very winnable. Indianapolis should be good, but you get them at home. So that's a four-game stretch right there. You got to at least go 3-1 and one in that stretch at least. Then you're at Denver. Tough game at Seattle, very winnable. Versus the Chargers, tough. At the Rams, that, that's tough. Versus the Patriots, winnable game. At Pittsburgh is winnable. Versus uh, the 49ers, I think the 49ers are going to be crazy good. And then versus Kansas City. So really, it's after that bye week. If you can manage this schedule, those first five weeks... You know, maybe you go three and two, two and three, one of those two things. So even if you start off two and three, you get two wins. Let's say you, you, you beat um, Arizona week two, you beat Tennessee, you lose the other three games. So you're two and three going into week seven. You got to at least go three and one in that four game stretch. And then at Denver is rough, but at Seattle's got to be a win. You know, there are games where you can see this team winning 9, 10, maybe 11 games if they win the games they're supposed to and then maybe get a few upsets. It's just going to come down to, are you able to split with the Chiefs? Or, you know, you got to go like 1-1 one and one against them. Just split with in-division matchups. It, when you go 0-2 against teams like the Chiefs, against teams like the Chargers, that's when you're going to get trounced in your overall standings. So this is a brutal, brutal schedule. I, I mean, at the Rams in, in, in an NFC game, at Pittsburgh, is it? Well, I think they'll beat Pittsburgh. Oh, that that's a Christmas Eve game. Well, good for them. That's a fun matchup. I'm guessing Kenny Pickett will be starting by then, so that should be an amazing vibe there in Pittsburgh. Um, so, yeah, there's a number of uh, very tough games. It, it, it is, you've got those first five weeks, and then you got the bye. And if you are a Raiders fan, I would say hope for three and two start. Hope for a three and two start. Maybe you knock off the Chargers week one. You know, maybe you beat Denver at home. It is winnable, but Denver is going to be a really good team with Russell Wilson, and they've got a solid defense. That, that's the problem. That's like you, you get Devontae Adams, you give up a first and second round pick, you invest in Derek Carr, you invest in a win now mentality, and you've built a good defense. You've got two great pass rushers. Maybe you're lacking at the cornerback position, which I think they are. The Damon Arnett pick doesn't help doing things like that. Um, but overall, you know, this is a team that does have talent. It's just so unfortunate they are in a, a gauntlet of a, of a division with three elite quarterbacks. Literally, all the other three teams in their division have 
elite quarterbacks. Like, like it's not even a question. It's not like one guy's borderline. So there is literally no break. I think after the bye week, it's got to be a win versus Houston, no doubt. You got to beat New Orleans. It's just the schedule. You have to. New Orleans is not horrible, but you got to beat Jameis Winston. If you, you win that game somehow at Jacksonville, must win versus Indianapolis. Indianapolis is going to be good, but that's a winnable game. It is winnable at home. Uh, Indianapolis has, is going to have a good defense, and I think Matt Ryan is going to have a career rejuvenation a little bit personally. But um, guys, it'll be really interesting to see what this team does. Possibly the most unlucky team, just based off of their division, based off the QBs in it. Russell Wilson going to the Denver Broncos has really made this. Also, I mean, Justin Herbert being basically a superstar since year one. It makes it an extremely hard division to be in. And then we don't even have to talk about Patrick Mahomes, right? So, although maybe Mahomes, little regression without Tyreek Hill. I don't know, man. With Andy Reid still there, it's tough to really see that. Uh, so we will see what happens with the Raiders. Right now, I would say... You know, you're looking at nine to ten wins at this point, and mainly based off of the division. So maybe like a nine and eight type season for the Raiders. That would probably get them fourth place in their division. That is why I consider them NFL's most unlucky team in 2022. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm of course the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.